Ladies and gentlemen, we have a mixed martial arts legend inside the studio today, Rick Genghis Han, a former U.S. Olympian, two-time Bellator tournament winner, and the former Titan FC champ. Rick, how are we doing today? Doing well. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's great to have you on. And we haven't seen you in a while. I mean, 2015, you had been thinking about retirement for a while, finally laid the gloves down. Now this year, you're coming back. Where did this decision come from? Uh, it's been kind of uh, on the back of my mind for or the front of my mind, I should say, for the last couple of years. Uh, I was content retiring. Um, I opened up a martial arts school. I'm still doing that. Um, but, you know, the last couple of years, I, you know, get the itch now and again. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll train. I'll start training and see how I feel. And then it just was just like, oh, this hurts. And this is I remember now why I retired in the first place. It, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like the body can't take it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and I did have a hip replacement two and a half years ago. And uh, my hip is awesome. It's feeling great now. So, and then this last few months, I was like, you know what? I, sh I should do something crazy. So, yeah. That, hey, might as well, right? Now. You only, only live once. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I might as well, right? Now, within that time, you had some judo in 2019 and two grappling matches, both in 2019 and then in 2021, testing out that new hit, maybe. What was the mindset behind entering in those competitions? Uh, the judo was actually before my hip, so that was super okay. painful. I, I couldn't even really move. Um, I had one, I think, grappling match since hip replacement. Um, I think it was last year. Yeah. So, Did you feel, feel good about those with your body and with the hip and everything? Uh, after surgery? Yeah. Yeah. No, it felt great. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's I should have done it years ago, like everyone says. And, uh, you know, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy I did it. Sure. Why did you hold off out of curiosity? If people were telling you years ago, hey, man, let's get that hip worked on. And you 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 never did until, uh, you know, it's recently. Just, it's such an extreme surgery. And I'm like, yeah. uh, you know, like, do I really need to do it? Maybe I can just kind of live through the pain. And you can, right? But your your quality of life is like, very Some different. Day I was waking up and I was limping around like I was 90 years old. I'm like, <laughs> I couldn't hike. You couldn't, you know, so I'm like, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to get it done. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy I did. Now, I'm curious, between 2015 and now, were there any offers or anybody from the MMA world that was trying to lure you back in? No, not, not at all. I think, you know, I made it pretty clear when I retired that I was done. And plus, yeah. I'm, I'm older. I don't think I'm a, a big attraction for uh, any – any companies out there, you know, and, and, uh, sure. you know, and I get it, you know, so it's, you know, that, that's cool. Fair. I would have done it anyways. So, you know, I was too busy with work. I'm still kind of too busy with work, but I had yeah. to make tell me, work. Tell me more about the gym. What have been the most difficult aspects of opening and running the martial arts gym? Uh, well, COVID was a, a, a bad yeah. time, right? That kind of slowed us down a little bit, you know, thankfully, you know, there a lot of other gyms and in, in, in schools that, weren't so lucky and they had to close completely. So um, fortunate enough that we, we survived through that and we're yeah. back up to where we used to be. But, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's hard being, you know, the, the, it's, it's my school. So I teach all the classes and it, it's, it's it can wear on you, you know, sure. but it's, uh, you know, I wouldn't trade anything for it. I love it. Uh, now, talking about this matchup in October, you've got Josiah Cavacante, who has achieved a number of things in the sport as well. Do you like this matchup? Does this particularly interest you? It does. I mean, he wasn't my first pick. Uh, there were okay. some other guys that um, were a little bit younger, you know, uh, and and uh, but they didn't, didn't it didn't pan out with those guys. So I'm like, you know what? I'm thinking about it and kind of watching some film on him. I was like, you know what? It kind of makes sense. He hasn't fought sure. in I think four years or five years. Um, and we both have this Titan FC kind of uh, connection where he won the belt after I retired. So, uh, you know, it was kind of like, well, that's kind of a cool little uh, story right there. So. An anecdote to it. Yeah, for sure. What do you yeah. what do you expect from this fight? Because obviously he's got such an extensive grappling background and pedigree, but one would say that plays right into your judo skills. Do you think that this is uh, stylistically a favorable matchup for you? I do. I mean, I'm I'm good everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, I mean, you couldn't really tell from my last few fights where I just did mostly boxing stuff because I was working on my boxing a lot. But you know, I, I've been really focusing on my jiu jitsu the last few years, um, and and so I think it's. I can handle him wherever the, 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 the match takes us, you know? And yeah. I, I think, 
you know, I think stylistically it's a good matchup for me. I think I'm a little bit taller, a little bit more rangy. Um, and, um, you know, he is a tough guy. He's a ton of experience. So I'm, I got to, I can't take him for granted and I won't because he's, he's definitely still very dangerous. What's the preparation looking like in this fight camp uh, that differs from earlier in the career when you were a bit younger? Are there any notable changes in how you get ready for these fights, the weight cutting and uh, the days in the gym, or is it all kind of the same? No, definitely way different. Um, it's not my preferred method of doing it, but I run a school full time, so I have to fit in my training when I can. Right. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's not what I really wanted, but I had to make it work, you know, um, you know, in previous years, I'd go up to Montreal and, you know, live there for a month or two for training camps and, and whatnot. And obviously now I can't do that. So, you know, I'm making it work, you know, there are later nights, earlier mornings and, and yeah. in the gym and stuff. And, you know, I have a good, a good support team around me and, you know, they're, they're getting me ready and I feel really, really good. How did they all feel about the return to MMA? Were they surprised or did they kind of anticipate you'd get back in there at some point? Uh, I've kind of always in the last couple of years, like I said, I kind of toyed with the idea and everyone's kind of like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, you're going to just stop. Like, you know, you're not going to follow through like you did last time. And, uh, <laughs> and then, then this time when I kind of really put my foot down and said, I'm going to do it. You know, I think a lot of people are like, why? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're 46 years old. What's the point? You don't have nothing to prove. And, um, uh, and, you know, so I'm like, you know what? I, I want to, prove this to myself. Like, I don't have anything to prove in the terms of, of the martial arts world or feel like my, my right. you know, that's all I, I achieved what I always wanted to do, but I just wanted to do some, something, something crazy, yeah. you know, so test myself in, in, in some ways. And Hey, a fist fight in Massachusetts doesn't really get crazier than that. Right. <laughs> yeah. I guess a really tough opponent too. So. Uh, now, I kind of wanted to touch on your goals within MMA and ask if you felt like you'd accomplished everything. And it, it sounds like you were pretty happy with where your career was when you laid it down in 2015. Yeah, I mean, I think when I got into MMA, I didn't expect to have the career that I did. Yeah, uh, A lot of people didn't expect that with me just because of my background. I was 32 when I started fighting. Um, and, you know, I progressed pretty fast. And I'm a, I was a fast learner and I had I went to the right training camps and had the right people around me. Um, and, uh, you know, overall, I, I always wanted to end like I did. I wanted to end on top with a belt. And I think that was the best way to, to kind of end my career is, you know, uh, go out on top and, and, and move on to the sunset. Yeah. I mean, once all boxes are checked, it's like, well, what is there left that I need to do? So I, I definitely understand that perspective. And a lot of guys, I think overstay the welcome. Sometimes they go out on very bad losing streaks and you, went out with a three fight win streak. I mean, that's, that's got to feel pretty good as well. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, I didn't, I didn't want to be like some of those guys who kind of yeah. carry on, you know, even though, like I said, <laughs> I'm getting back into it now, but you know, <laughs> I, I'm not doing it because uh, I want to get back into MMA career, so to speak. You know, I just want to go and have some fun, like the grappling matches, right? I just want to go and have some fun, win or lose. I don't care. It's, I have nothing to prove. It's fun for me. I, I like the the challenge and, and the, the obstacle that, you know, in the, you know, especially facing someone tough like Jay-Z. Yeah. And hey, you stay fit. It's it's also a good way to be be athletic and not really feel lethargic. So I get that. Right. You know, I uh, have to fight too, right? I better be training hard, right? So. <laughs> now, I want to take it back all the way to when you were 12 years old. You started judo at that point in time. Were there any other sports you were toying around with? Any other avenues you felt like you would go? Or was it just nothing until you found judo? Yeah, it was, it was nothing really. I mean, that's, that was kind of like, that's all I wanted to do once I started. Um, yeah. After a couple of years, I kind of like had that long-term goal of Olympics and all that. And, you know, that was kind of like, just, you know, uh, you know, like I said, just a dream um, years, years ahead of me. And that was pretty much all I wanted to do. And then when I got in high school, you know, I, I wrestled, I saw that and I was like, Oh, I could do that. That's very similar. Yeah. You know? Tell me about that experience at the Olympics, obviously in 2004 in Athens, two and two placing ninth overall. Um, did you, when you reflect on that experience, kind of feel positively about it or, or negative about the experience overall? Oh, definitely positive. Um, yeah. I, I wasn't, I wasn't like a world beater in, in the judo world. Um, you know, so I, you know, I had my moments now and again, but I wasn't like expected to medal or do really well. I wasn't expected sure. to do as well. As I did. Um, so I just, I had a good day. I had the right draw. Um, you know, obviously I would have liked to have done better, but, uh, you know, for me, that was, that was amazing. I mean, I got to, I got to experience the whole, the whole thing. I got to 
walk through the opening ceremonies. I got to, you know, stay there for the entire uh, event, the whole, the whole thing and do the closing ceremonies and, and kind of sightsee and, and experience all that. And it was, it was incredible. Who were, who are some of the people that you bumped elbows with? I know Ronda Rousey at that point in time was also on that Olympic crew, I think. And uh, from other countries, any other athletes that you met uh, and, and had a fun story with? Um, that was so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, uh, obviously Ronda, but Ronda at that time, I think she was like 14 or she was very young. So she didn't sure. like hang out with us. Like she was kind of like, you know, in her own, doing her own thing. But um. We got, I got to like, you see a lot of, oh yeah. So like the, uh, the cafeteria where everyone eats. Mm -hmm. Right. So it was like, it's like for 10,000 people, you know, in Jeez. there. So you go there and you eat whenever you want, um, all kinds of different kinds of food. And we'd hang out with like Andy Roddick, the tennis player. So like we were friends, like we'd hung out with him and he'd be sitting next to us and we were chilling and, you know, some other, I met Nar Martina Nevertolova and some other, you know, obviously you see all the other yeah. big name there, you know, and, and, LeBron James and all those guys were, you know, around that, that time. So it's kind of a, uh, it, was, it was cool. It's kind of, you know, I wasn't like a, I wouldn't go up to people and like, you know, try to get autographs and pictures with them. Like, <laughs> I probably have, looking back, I probably should have, would have been cool, yeah. but I, I didn't do it. So after the Olympics and uh, everything in judo was sort of completed, is that at, at that point where you're like, okay, MMA makes sense or was it blending over and you'd already been doing MMA before the Olympics? No. So I, I moved back home after the Olympics in 2004 and I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Sure. Um, and uh, so I decided to try for the 2008 Olympics. Okay. But Interesting. If I was going to do that, I was like, I can't train in Colorado where I was. I can't train back in Oregon where I was. I, was, I have to move out to Boston and train with Jimmy Pedro. Um, Cause he was my teammate in 2004 and, and obviously mm -hmm. a friend, and, um, you know, one of the best coaches and athletes in, in U S history. So 2005, I moved, I uh, drove out to Boston here, and, um, you know, and I didn't make the 2018. I had a good run, didn't make it. Um, and at that time, I knew I was still kind of relatively young. I was like, you know what? I want to try MMA. You know, I want to yeah. give it a shot. I feel good. And, and that's right then, that same summer, I think, is when I started. Interesting. So, now, yeah. I kind of wanted to ask about a, an opponent of yours who's still having a ton of success. Michael Chandler uh, was stepping in the cage with you and uh, he defeated you on that occasion. What do you make of his career after he's gone on from that fight? Uh, he's scary. Yeah. He, uh, he's, uh, he's definitely improved a lot. I mean, he was scary back then. Um, he was more, I think, of a wrestler, at least he, when, he, when he fought me. Um, but now he's, he's, his striking has is, is just gotten, you know, way way more advanced and um uh, it's awesome you know it's cool to to look and you know tell people like hey i fought him even though yeah. I, I lost but it's like you know <laughs> I, I, I fought him and he's you know one of the best guys in the world do you have an early prediction on uh, him and dustin poirier um that's a tough one uh I, i'm rooting for chandler of course you know but um you can go either way those guys are all so talented for sure. Uh, now, I was curious, talking about the UFC, that's a promotion that you never fought for. Was there any interest or opportunity to potentially get into the UFC? Yeah, definitely. So in 2010, I was in the in the league, local league still, and I was like maybe like eight or nine and oh, and we were talking, I think, with uh, I think Sean Shelby at the time. Yeah. And they wanted, I think, a few more wins. You know, at that time, you needed like – like they want to be like 12 and 0, 15 and 0 and have fought good guys before they kind of considered. And plus I was at that time, welterweight, which is a stacked division. Yeah. So I was talking with them and um, they're like, Oh, just wait a little bit longer. And then uh, I was actually signed to, to fight a local show. And I had the opportunity for Bellator to win a hundred thousand dollars in their tournament. So I was like, uh, well, what do I wait for UFC? Do I try to go win a hundred thousand dollars? So I made that decision and, I, I, looking back, I think it was probably the best decision I could have. Yeah. So. Talking about that win and the, the two tournaments that you were able to successfully achieve, can you run me through the emotions and, and your own personal feelings after you achieved that first tournament? Uh, Like l winning the first one or losing the first one? Well, obviously, yeah, runner-up, I think, in 2004, and then you won in 2005. Is that what it was? Uh, la, la. I forget. 2012, I think I was runner up. 2012. 2011, runner -up. And then 2000. 
2012, I think I won. Sure. Yeah, something like that. Well, um, we'll start. We'll start with the win. How did it feel to, yeah. <laughs> to finally get that win under your belt? Uh it was it was incredible. I mean, it's 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 hard. I mean, you're fighting three fights in three months. Like you know, every month you have a fight. So mm. it's uh, especially that my first fight, I got pretty banged up and I couldn't train for like two weeks. And then I had a fight two weeks later um, with that first tournament. And I was at lightweight, and uh, you know, so it was it was tough. But uh, you know, and I had, had finals against a tough opponent and went to decision. But it was incredible. Like you know, it's I never made that much money before, and it was just. Yeah. All around, it was it was it was exciting. Your exit from Bellator, I believe, was around the same time Scott Coker was coming in, correct? Yeah, I think he was there a few months after. Yeah. What do you make of Bellator within the last decade or so? Because you know, a lot of people have mixed opinions. I was curious as someone who fought for them so many times. What do you think they are doing? You know, good and and potentially bad. Um, I never actually. I don't think I ever met Scott. I had like I think two fights, but I never had met him. But um. I think you know they're they're doing everything that they should be doing to get the the notoriety, and trying to keep up with UFC. Obviously, they're the number two probably organization in the world. Sure. Um, um, you know, it kind of it's kind of bummer for me because you know after I retired, they started doing million dollar tournaments. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, like, oh man! But uh, you know, which is which is awesome. You know, I think it's it's great for the fighters, and uh, you know, and it's it's just a, it's another it's good to have competition for the UFC. Sure. Now, talking about competition, million dollar tournaments, uh, PFL, right? I think they've been doing a, a pretty good job as well. Have you tuned into that promotion? What do you think of them? A little bit, yeah, because you know my former teammate Kayla Harrison is you know crushing that over there, and um, I and for a moment, like maybe two years ago, I was watching like the I think the finals or something like that, or the tournament finals, and there was a judo guy I think who won the lightweight tournament and won million dollars. I'm like. I, maybe should I get give him a call? <laughs> should I get back in? <laughs> yeah, so I had that, those thoughts, but I'm like, oh, no, it's just too much work. So talking about Kayla and uh, you know the PFL, she's obviously fighting in the championships once again. Larissa Pacheco, she's defeated her on two occasions. Do you think Kayla gets it done a third time? I think so. Like she's very smart. All her coaches are smart. She's you know one of the best athletes in the world that's ever stepped on the mat for judo. So, uh, you know, she does her homework, she trains hard and, and, you know, so she's going to make the right adjustments and improvements the third time. Let's say you could sort of maybe match make or, or put certain pieces into place with Kayla. What would you do after uh, this fight in November? If she wins, do you go the Chris cyborg route? Do you kind of return and try uh, to, to get with the UFC? Where would you go if you were Kayla? It's, it's tough because I don't know, if she can make the lower weight classes, like, cause I think she right. fights 55 and 45 is, you know, you know, decent popularity wise, but obviously 35 is the, the where it's weight. at. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't think she can make that weight healthy. Like she, maybe she can do 45, but she's, she's a strong girl. Um, so if she could, then I think that would be, you know, obviously if she can get to the UFC or Bellator or something like that. And, you know, I think she would do, do really well. For sure. Now, one of the last things I've got for you, Rick, is your dog, I believe, Renly. Is that how you pronounce the name? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. tell me about Renly. Uh, when did you get uh, him? And, and uh, you know, as a dog guy, what are some good pro tips to uh, owning a dog? Uh, so he's a weird dog, right? Because he's hairless. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I got him as a puppy uh, when I first opened my school. So seven years ago. And he was supposed to be like, we thought he was supposed to be like a little dog. But he was a mixed breed with a with a bigger one, so he ended up getting bigger and bigger. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's just a lazy lazy bum now and does nothing. But yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, it's just you know, I, I try to. Uh, he, he lives uh, with his mom right now, so he likes it better over there. There's, there's more dogs and stuff to play with, but uh, you know, I, I see him every couple of days. Now, last one to return to Combat FC two October. It goes down. Can we get an official prediction? of you versus Josiah's Cavalcante, how do you think that this one's going to end? Uh, well, I think I'm going to be uh, victorious. I'm going to, you know, put on a good show. I think um, I'm going to be in better shape. Like I said, I think my striking is going to be more on point. Um, you know, I'm going to be stronger, maybe a little bit bigger than him. Um, so I, I see myself uh, winning that fight and in, 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 in a good way. Do you think there's going to be any more MMA for you after this? Or is it this one is just, again, do something crazy when in your 40s? Uh, you never know. 
I'm not, not counting it out. Like I, you know, depends how this one goes, but you know, I can see myself doing it again. And, you know, cause again, it, it keeps me motivated to stay in the gym and train and, um, and work out. And, and, you know, sometimes, you know, for me, at least I think I, I need that motivation sometimes to keep me, keep me grounded. Sure. I love it. Well, Rick, thank you so much for the time. Best of luck in your preparation. And I personally can't wait to see you back inside the octagon. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it.